Good morning. It's Monday again, the second Monday in October, and I'm happy to be with you. I love this time of season. I love when I need a sweatshirt in the morning and a t-shirt throughout the afternoon. Beautiful days. And I have to tell you, I spent the weekend with my mom, and as I drove back for church early Sunday morning, I left, it was just after sunrise, and driving through all of the fields and the trees and everything that I saw, I felt like I had worshiped by the time I got home. The trees were breathtaking. It's that short window where the temperatures are very cool, but there hasn't been a frost yet, so the trees aren't losing their leaves. Oh, just breathtaking. If you haven't been outside to notice these things, or if you've been outside but have been occupied with other things, take some time to go outside and just be present in the beauty that is this time of year. So my spirit is full. Last week, I also had opportunities to be on or in what I call sacred space, the campground that has so many memories for me. I gathered with colleagues. We had great conversations. We did a lot of planning for the coming year. My soul is full and I am ready to share some great things with you this morning. First of all, let me introduce myself if you don't know me. My name is Melissa Ebkin, and I'm the pastor at the Iliopolis and Nyanic Christian Churches in Iliopolis and Nyanic, Illinois. I'm the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries. This is an outreach effort for those who don't live near here or who don't have a church home or who are spiritual or not religious. I'm also the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast where we share stories, inspiring stories of people that have leaned into the difficult and uncomfortable situations in life and overcame them. Today, let's talk about self-actualization. Let's talk about how we become the best versions of ourselves that we can. A common term we hear these days is emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence coupled with spiritual health and growth is an amazing way to not only transform your life, but also to have better relationships, better satisfaction, find your purpose, and have peace. What would it be like for you to not be tossed and turned by every storm that came your way? If somebody says something upsetting, what would it be like for you to not be reactive to that but to be confident in who you are, know who and whose you are, and to maintain peace throughout those situations. That's a little bit of what emotional intelligence and spiritual growth can do. Emotional intelligence helps us to know what we're feeling, understand why we are feeling what we are feeling, and how to manage that. So the emotionally intelligent person is the one when in a very anxious situation, when everybody else is highly anxious, the emotionally intelligent person is the one that is calm, that is able to think and strategize and plan. There are a lot of descriptions of emotional intelligence and basically it's just growing up and maturing in our emotions and we were never really taught how to do this and it's nobody's fault. It's just one of those things that if you don't seek it out, you're not gonna know it. I had the benefit and the privilege of being trained in this early on in ministry and I'm still on this journey of growth, but I've made tremendous gains in my own life and it's affected me my leadership, my work, my personal life, my family life, my relationships, all of those things. In fact, it was after doing some of this work that I was able to have a relationship with a lasting relationship with my spouse. So these principles, even if you don't master them, engaging with them is powerful. So let's look at it a little bit. And when you couple emotional intelligence with spiritual growth, that is 
what gives you tremendous results. You can go out and find programs for emotional intelligence. You can go out and find programs for spiritual growth. In fact, I do both. But the, the, real, the real sweet spot is finding someone who will help you grow them together. If you're interested in this, send me a message and I can connect you with that. But let's look at four categories of emotional intelligence. These are different areas of your life that you can develop. One is self-management. That is managing our own emotions, being able to think clearly in highly stressful situations. You're driving somewhere, uh, a deer jumps out, your car is getting, you maybe have a fender bender. Being able to think clearly in that moment, instead of just being reactive to your emotions, can change the outcome. Say another person is involved, or say you have an interaction at a store, or you know, there's so many ways that we find ourselves in anxious situations. But being able to manage your emotions and stay calm, that's powerful. Then the other, Area. So that's one, self-management. The second of four is self-awareness. Knowing how our beliefs and emotions affect our thoughts and our behaviors. So this awareness helps us to make changes if we have negative habits. So for instance, say uh, in an anxious situation, I have a habit of... Um, uh, of being bad to myself, of saying, oh, why, I'm such a terrible person. Why do I think that? You know, that's not a helpful habit. If you have this, self-awareness will help you grow into seeing that that's a pattern you have and help you to change that. So again, emotional intelligence is self-management, being able to see what we're feeling in the situation and be calm the self-awareness to stop doing those negative patterns in stressful situations. Social awareness is that area that helps us be aware of what others are experiencing and feeling and helps us to pick up on social cues in a situation. And then relationship management is a fourth. Relationship management is really how we manage conflict uh, how we have positive relationships with others, all of those things. So self-management, self-awareness, social awareness, and relationship management. Those are four kind of arenas or areas of emotional intelligence. So what does all of this have to do with our daily lives? How would our lives look? if we sought to do some work in each of those four areas. Well, if we set out to build an emotional vocabulary, this is important. Uh, part of understanding and knowing our emotions is being able to identify them. And we say words like um, happy, sad, angry, hurt, guilty, embarrassed, confident, energized, there are a bunch of these words. What's the difference between tired and exhausted? What's the difference between woe and dismay? Uh, the more specific we can get with our emotions, the more we can do with that knowledge and information. So build your emotional vocabulary. When you're feeling, take a time, five minutes each day, and write down some feelings you had throughout the day and be as specific as possible. Google this, Google emotional vocabulary wheel. That helps you start with the big ones and get more specific as you build out. If I can find that quickly, I will post that in the comments. So we can build our emotional vocabulary. We can think before we react and if there is an event that causes a reaction in us frequently, recognizing that pattern and working to change it will yield big results for us. Uh, we can't control how we feel, but we can control how we react to those feelings. 
if we always do a behavior when we feel angry or when we feel stressed, we can recognize that and make a decision of whether or not that's something we want to continue. And if not, then we can work on changing that. Uh, third, pay attention to the way you manage stress and emotions. You know, what are your emotional strengths and weaknesses? How does your mood influence your thoughts and your decision making? This is a biggie. When you are at your best, when the wind is at your back, when the sun is shining warmly on your face, when everyone is healthy and happy and vital in those moments, how do you act? How do you plan and how do you behave? And how is that different from when none of that is true? You know, working on consistency between those situations will help a lot. And this is a biggie, this next one. Receive criticism with grace and give feedback. Now, criticism, let's talk about this for a minute. Who likes criticism? Yeah, none of us do. But the thing about criticism is it's not about you. It really isn't about you. It may be like 1% about you, but criticism is about the other person. It's about the critic and what they need that they're not getting. If someone comes up and criticizes you, it's because they're wanting something from you. They need something from you. So when you have criticism, it stings, I know, but remember that criticism is a form of pursuit. This person is criticizing you because they want or need something from you. So take the feeling, take the emotion out of it, and just try to figure out what it is that they're wanting or needing from you. Because, you know, we don't express those things well, just the way it is. So pay attention to nonverbal communication. People speak, but are there, is their body language saying the same thing? Are their actions backing up their words? Uh, for instance, when you have a conversation with someone, are you fully engaged? You know, are your feet pointing away from another person? That means you're really trying to get out of a conversation. Or if you're talking with someone, are their feet pointing in a different direction? You know, are their shoulders square on? In sometimes difficult situations, we don't want to be that engaged, that can be a little intense. And sometimes it's better to have side-by-side -side conversations than face-to-face -face conversations. But just notice people's body language. Are their hips, shoulders, and feet all pointing in the same direction? That means they are fully engaged and fully present. If their feet are trying to go, that will tell you how engaged they are. Um, See conflict as an opportunity to learn and understand more about others. Okay, nobody likes conflict. It's icky. It makes us feel bad. It makes our stomachs clench and our shoulders stiffen and our back hurt. Conflict is not fun. I get it. I know. I hate conflict. But conflict can be an amazing teacher. Next time you experience conflict, instead of avoiding it, lean into it, engage it, and do so from the mindset of being a detective. So take yourself out of it and imagine that you are a detective and your job in this conflict is to fully understand the motivations of the other person and to understand the good place that they are coming from. Now I know not all conflict comes from a good and healthy place, but put your detective hat on and try to just ask a lot of questions, not so you can come back with a retort or disarm them, but ask questions to fully understand where this person is coming from. There is so much value in this alone. Imagine if you are angry and somebody just wants to listen to why you're angry, to understand why you feel that way. 
not to judge you, but just to understand you better. That is a gift. And I tell you what, if you're that person, if you're that person who can understand and listen to others when they're in conflict, then that's going to reap so many benefits for you in relationships that are personal and professional. So if you would like to read this, I've posted it in the blog today. I'll put a link to the blog in the comments. I know last week there were some problems. Some people reached out and let me know that the link wasn't working well. I've got that fixed. Uh, it's at lightlifeandloveministries.com slash blog. That link will be in the comments. I'm also including a link for a PDF. If you would like to just download this whole conversation in a quick, easy guide, I have that linked in the comments as well, or I will have that linked in the comments as well. So any other questions, reach out to me. If you're interested in growing your emotional intelligence and your spiritual health, send me a direct message, reach out to me on Messenger, and we will figure out the next steps together. So again, I'm Melissa Ebkin. I want you to be the most beautiful version of yourself that you can be. And I want to support you however you want to need me to in that process. So be well, friends. Have a fantastic week. And I'll talk to you again next Monday. Bye for now.